Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP1. This is a part 2 of my project of putting a proper permanent habitat on the surface of the moon. In the part 1 I have deployed all the hardware needed for the operation of the base. And right now you can see the base being propelled on the translunar injection. Hydrolox tag will be responsible for both injection and the braking burn. Currently the base is prepared to host the crew of 4 for several months. It has enough food, water and oxygen to make the stay possible. But the plan is to eventually keep it permanently crewed with regular supply runs. After getting to low lunar orbit, maneuver is plotted to pinpoint the landing location. TAG still has about 1000 meters per second of delta TP left, so it will be used for initial deorbitation. Then the TAG is jettisoned and the base continues the descent using its own engines. What are tens in Lunex configuration? This configuration is extremely useful as it has deep throttling capabilities. I've designed the landing stage to have surplus of fuel, so I could be a bit picky about final landing location. I've made several corrections to touch down on a possibly flat ground with a nice view. Success. Crew is waiting impatiently to visit this new habitat, but they need a way to get there from the tower station. A reusable crewed lander. It is a single stage design that uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen. It is over 4000 meters per second of delta V, so it can easily go both ways without refueling. Tanks have good isolation, and active radiators make sure that there will be no significant boil off of propellant during crew visit. After TLI burn, Lander unfolds its big solar panels to start electricity production. Transfer stage lights up once again to rendezvous with the station. I've overshot the target a bit once again, but it wasn't that bad. The stage has done its job, so it orbits itself and hits the moon. Lander approaches the station and waits a bit for better lighting conditions. Docking procedure went by the book and now finally everything is ready for the first crew. They lift off on top of Genie rocket in a proven design capsule. This Carolox rocket can get over 60 ton to Leo, which is just enough for the capsule and the additional transfer stage.
the ally is complete and the crew is on its way to tower station. A small correction, set a proper approach. And this time I've managed to bring just in time and soon the capsule performed docking. Our station is fully complete. It looks quite impressive in my opinion. Crew of 4 has boarded the lander and undocked to continue their journey. They will stay on the surface of the moon for at least a month. First landing burn cancels almost all of the horizontal speed. It's not optimal approach but it makes precise landing much simpler. The minimum TWR of the lander is higher than 1 and my piloting wasn't the best, so I had to shut down engines several times to make the proper landing. Finally on the ground, just a short walk from the base. Ok, maybe not that short, but I had to deal with it. And it was this moment I've realized I've messed up. Just a bit. But the contract that was supposed to give me a bunch of funds for this base required space for 10 astronauts. Guess how many could fit into this one? Yeah, 9. Because of that, I had to send additional equipment. Modified Golem with 4 additional boosters from Gargoyle rocket and the new Hydrolox upper stage launched as soon as the payload was completed. The main cargo is a small cupola. Attaching it to the Stingray base will fulfill the 10 seed requirement. I've also added two small drills that will mine for a regolith and they will slowly build up shielding, which will allow for longer and safer visits. Raft aimed for direct landing without getting to lunar orbit and a correction burn put it into final approach. I absolutely didn't panic and this maneuver was 100% planned. Per 
perfect soft landing was achieved as nobody would like to damage the lunar habitat module. Now, mission engineer Rebecca Jackson went out for EVA and used her tools to separate Coppola from landing equipment. Later, had a small C4 charge attached and Rebecca activated the countdown. This way, debris was got rid of. Cupola and the drills were brought to the base and installed using Kerbal Attachment System features. Then, regular processor was launched and shielding started to accumulate slowly. And in the meantime, landing engines, tanks and RCS are being separated. Engines and thrusters won't be needed anymore, so another C4 charge was placed to get rid of them. Tanks might be useful in the future in case fuel production will be held in situ. Officially, Stingray Base is completed and the 30 day countdown has finally begun. By the end of this time, another Genie launches with a small crew to rover that will help transferring crew from lander to the base and back. HG-3 engine ignites and propels the rover towards the moon. Start wheels allow for quite simple and rough landing. Then rover drives towards Stingray and picks up the crew to get them back to their lander. In the last moment, I've realized no flag was planted during this mission. So Sibyl went out once again, planted it and came back. Rover drove back to the base and it has extended its solar panels and went into hibernation mode, awaiting future crew. Lander had to perform a bit of dogleg maneuver to reach the tower station, but those of emergence were quite safe.
one more burn and the station is in reach. Raft is now refueled and is ready for the next trip. But first, three of the crew comes back to Earth. Final ignition of the AJ-10 sets the proper course and four days later capsule separates from service module and re-enters the atmosphere. Soon, new crew will launch to visit Stingray Base, but that would be all for today. Thank you everyone for watching, please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and see you again in my next video.